Hello everyone, welcome to my channel where I provide practical tools to assist you on your journey of healing, transformation, and enlightenment. And today's guest is Connie Ann. Connie was coached and trained by Bob Proctor and is a transformational coach who coaches and mentors corporate teams, business owners, and individuals to achieve their personal and professional goals, as well as to make a bigger and more positive impact in the world. Hi, Connie. Thank you so much for sharing your time with me today to do this interview. I really appreciate it. You're welcome. Hi, Jane. And thank you for having me here. I'm, I'm honored to be here and I'm looking forward to helping your audience and sharing and just seeing where this conversation goes. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much. So first of all, just to let the audience to get to know you a bit more, could you share with us your own transformation stories? What was your motivation and what kept you going and what helped you to reach the success level that you have now? The beginning of this journey, uh, I, I believe that we all begin our journey at the beginning, like day one when we are born. But for, for me, what really set my world on fire in a very massive way to get me truly to where I am right now, um, I would have to back up to finding myself broken homeless and living on the floor of a friend's apartment. and couch surfing and I had other friends who like when their kids were away at their friend's place they would um, send me a message and say my kids away for the night do you need a bed to sleep in um, and so I was very blessed by all of those friends but I was in my late 30s and a whole lot of me was really upset about my life being there because we have dreams yeah we all have when we're younger we we're brought up with these ideas of of what life could be through mm -hmm. television and through seeing what other people are doing and and I did not expect myself to be broke and homeless when I was in my late 30s so in in my darkest times I I actually went through a period where I had to just count to the next 30 minutes to get through it and I don't know why it's so specific for me but 3.30 jumps out at me that I just needed to get myself to 3.30. Then I just needed to get myself to 4 o'clock. And just breathing. Um, and I do want to clarify, never in my mind did I ever think of checking out, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. But it was painful to breathe, just to kind of exemplify where where that was at. But never once did I ever think of checking out. I, that's not in my, it's not in my DNA. But we have pain and we get to places that really hurt and we see people with more. I have siblings who are very successful and I started wondering why are they successful and I'm not when we had the same parents even, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And why do some humans have such an amazing life and other humans do not? Are we not all human? Are we not all the same on some level? And started blaming my outside world. Why does this happen to me? Why do I always have this? Why does this always come up for me? Why do I always get into the same destructive relationships? And then something in me tweaked not so long after that, those moments on the floor of it, just willing myself to get to the next half hour, that... The thing I kept saying is me, my life happening to Connie Ann. And, and I thought, hmm, interesting. It's not happening to that person. It's not happening to that person. It's happening to me. Therefore, I must have something to do with that. Because if it was happening to everybody, then I'd be like, oh, okay, it's happening to everybody. But it wasn't. It was just happening to me. So I started wondering how I got myself there and what did I do? And I started reading. And a friend of mine gave me the book, The Secret, which is actually behind my head right there. <laughs> That's the exact book a friend of mine gave me. And I keep it there to remind myself that I have the power to create whatever life I want to have. Because that book, studying everything in it, watching the movie, doing the work, I created my new life. I got myself out of that mess, just like I realized I got myself into that mess through choices 
I chose to marry that man that I married, that I left, that ended up me being broken, homeless. I chose to work for a company that didn't respect me. And ultimately, I didn't respect them and so got myself fired. I did that to myself. I also chose to leave all of that behind without anywhere to go. I chose to implode my life. And now looking back, I had to do that to save myself. But I did that. My life, my choices, my journey. And that led me to Bob Proctor, who teaches freedom of choice. Yeah. We all have higher Mm -hmm. faculties. We all have the ability to pick and choose what we think and what we feel. Every human on the planet, the difference between where I was and where everybody else was, and this is what I found out that really launched me and got me going again, I just had to start thinking Mm -hmm. instead of feeling bad and feeling sad and being angry at the world. I started being hopeful for my future. Mm -hmm. What can I do? Who can I talk to? Who do I know? What better choices could I make? Yeah. And through all of that transition, I just knew that I was not alone. Mm -hmm. And I know I'm not alone. And I see it on social media. People are making wrong choices. Mm -hmm. So many people are. Why does this keep happening to me? How come I'm in such a bad relationship? But that's where I was. And I've gotten me out of it, and I've helped so many other people get out of it. And the truth of the matter is we're all responsible for ourselves. And it's a beautiful journey. When we actually realize that instead of fear, because I did go through a place of, um, oh, my gosh, nobody's coming to help me. I am so alone. I'm all by myself. And I flipped it. And it wasn't the words. It was how I was saying it. I'm like, nobody is coming to save me. I'm going to do this myself. Mm -hmm. I am going to get myself out of this. I alone will do this. Mm -hmm. And my life within one year, I went to high five figure income from broken homeless by changing how I was thinking. And if I can do it, anybody can do it. And how many times, Jean, have, and, and you do interviews a lot. So how many times have you heard rags to riches stories. We all have heard them. Mm -hmm. And if one person can have it, we all can do it. Yeah. Yeah. So here I am. I've been taught and trained by Mr. Bob Proctor. I am um, a certified consultant for his company. I teach his programs. I also teach my own programs. Mm -hmm. And like you said, I teach individuals. I teach corporate. I Right now, I'm actually doing live in person. I'm doing my first one next week, going out on stage again for the first time in forever. Um, And everybody just needs to know that Mm -hmm. we can all do, be, and have it all. And we truly can. Yeah. So Mm -hmm. so that's that's my message to the world. Um, Mm -hmm. And it's a beautiful world, everybody. Yeah, that's amazing. Wow. So could you share with us, like, how did you get to in contact with Bob Proctor? Did you reach out to him or did you uh, attend a seminar of his? I um, I started doing some of his free stuff. He has free stuff online. Yeah. So, uh, and and so I started doing his free work and, and besides Bob Proctor, I really dug into Eckhart Tolle, The Power mm-hmm. of Now, um, New Earth, uh, Dr. Wayne Dyer, amazing as well. Uh, I landed on Bob Proctor for reasons that I can't explain. It was just Mm -hmm. where I was meant to be. Just like anybody listening to this interview right now, this is where you're meant to be. So just Mm -hmm. embrace it and and see what you're here to get from it because there are no mistakes. In Bob Proctor's trainings, in in his teachings, and what I learned along the way is watching and reading is not enough. You have to do. So I actually started doing everything he was telling me to do and I was like most people I used to go to webinars and read books and put it down or walk away and go oh that was cool and then get on with my life which was not getting on with my life it was actually (laughs) choosing to stay stuck so I invested in a weekend long training with Bob Proctor from uh, and I wasn't able to travel to LA but it was 
the beginning of online training. So he was doing it in person in LA, but he was satelliting it onto our internets through some magical thing that, that was brand new back then. It was called Paradigm Shift. Yeah. And that was so amazing. And I did everything that was in that. And my now husband, um, my best friend, I was very, very blessed and, and grateful that I've um, attracted the most amazing person in my life. But him and I did this course together and we did the work together. Okay. We held each other about accountable through it. And after the transformation from that, because I already thought my life was pretty amazing, it just catapulted it to a whole other level by doing the work. I contacted the Proctor Gallagher Institute and I said, I got to do this. This material has changed my life. I got to do this. And, and so I was uh, brought on as a trainee. Mm -hmm. So uh, I was trained by Bob Proctor um, himself, but he also um, had at that time, and he still does, um, and Bob Proctor has, has passed on, mm -hmm. but he's left an amazing company. Sandy Gallagher is now at the helm, and she's doing an incredible, amazing job. And, um, and so I've been trained in my opinion, by the best of the best in the industry, as far as law of attraction, thought, feeling, action, control. Yeah. Um, and and so, uh, so that was that was how I I, I found Bob Proctor and um, and and became who I am. But uh, he was an amazing man. He was such mm -hmm. a beautiful man. Yeah. And he just wanted everybody in the world to know mm -hmm. what he knew. He spent his life studying this stuff. And it saved my life. Mm -hmm. So I got to spend the rest of my life honoring his legacy and moving it forward um, yeah. because of who he was. Mm -hmm. I want to be like him. Yeah. I want to change yeah. lives like he does. And, mm -hmm. and it changed my life. So it'll change everybody's. It's yeah. beautiful. Yeah. I just, obviously, I can't talk enough about it. Um, I've been doing this for, for uh, a, a long time, many, many years. Mm -hmm. um, and... Yeah, I have to thank yes. Bob for it from yeah. the bottom of my heart. Yeah, I remember his uh, paradigm shift video. I think that was the my starting point of awakening as well. First, yeah. awakening to the realization that I am in charge of my thoughts and emotions, and then I think I got more further. Actually, got into esoteric understanding of the human path, mm -hmm. um, and I really like what you talked about. Like you paid attention to your thoughts and you realize that it's all me, right? And I think in today's society, people tend to separate feelings from thoughts, but actually they actually really connect with one another. Could you talk about like how Bob Proctor sees thoughts and emotions, how they interact with each other? Can't have one without the other. <laughs> they are very directly related. I'll I'll lay it out and then I'll explain it. So the, the interaction between them is our thoughts becomes our feelings. Our feelings become our actions. Our actions cause a reaction, and that reaction is our results. Mm -hmm. So it's all laid out. So if I break that down, our, our thoughts are ideas. They're things that come to us. You hear something in the news, and you have a thought based on belief, based on habit, based on your past that this is good or bad, and we make a judgment on it. This is good or bad. Then from thinking this is good or this is bad, we then make another choice mm -hmm. whether or not we're going to get emotionally involved in that choice and that idea. Mm -hmm. Because nothing that happens is good or bad. It just is until we put our judgment on it. When we get emotionally involved in anything, our body moves into physicality on it. So our emotions cause our bodies to go into action. If you hear something pleasing, you smile. If yeah. you bite on a lemon, unless you're one of those one in one billion people who love lemons, when you bite on it, your face is going to mess up. You instantly and automatically go into physical reaction to that, that thought, right? It tastes sour, you think, ooh, that's sour, and your face <laughs> does its thing. 
anything we get emotionally involved in, our body goes into action. Mm -hmm. It's very, very important to choose thoughts, the right thoughts. Because yeah. our thoughts, when we decide, and it's a choice mm -hmm. to get emotionally involved in something, yeah. then that is totally going to drive our momentum forward. But it starts with our thoughts. What is going on with majority of the people in the world, and I would, I don't have a number, but I would probably say at least 90% of the planet, they look at their results. They're mm -hmm. looking at their life and they're worried about their bills and they're, oh, I don't like this. And I did that too. Woe is me. I'm broken, homeless. How did this happen? But because I was feeling really bad about myself and mad at the world, I didn't want to get out of bed. I didn't want to get up. I didn't want to get dressed. I didn't want to have a shower. So I didn't do anything to move myself forward. I chose to feel bad. Therefore, my body did not move. Mm -hmm. When I started to feel good and started to get excited about what I was building towards and the life I actually wanted instead of the crappy life I had, I started moving into action. Because my emotions changed, so my body moved in a different direction. My thoughts changed, my feelings changed, my actions changed. I got a different reaction mm -hmm. and therefore started having a different reality. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I love that. And I think sometimes it is hard to um, examine your thoughts and beliefs because they come from your family background, uh, of your upbringing. And that's why, but it doesn't mean that you don't have a choice. You have a choice to shed light on it. Uh, it's just, it can be more difficult, but once you come through it, there's also a lot of wisdom and light come through as well. And then you will be coming in touch with your own gifts as well. Yes, yes, 100%. It's mm -hmm. not easy. It, it's not easy. Anybody mm -hmm. that tells you it's easy, it's not easy. It's simple. Mm -hmm. it's simple it's just a matter of catching yourself feeling bad and mm -hmm. decide to feel good yeah it's really that simple it ain't easy yeah absolutely yes yeah. things today like we, we're gonna focus on money creation and focusing on the manifestation of wealth and not just money because i think well, nowadays people tend to associate wealth with money because we use money to buy things uh however we all consciously, subconsciously want what money can give us. So we actually want wealth and opulency rather than just money. And I find the analogy of going to a job that you don't like and working for like 50 years and never get out of it to in comparison with uh, doing really hard work and becoming an entrepreneur and doing something that's truly that you are passionate about work really hard for 10, 20 years. And after that, you really see how your own business grow and the, the amount of positive emotions and positive changes in your life. It's so huge. It, it's like parallel to self-development as well. Initially, it may be easy to dodge problems, but you're going to be like a frog who's being boiled slowly, right? And in the end, there's no good outcome from it uh, rather than face the challenges and come out of it mm -hmm. yeah i love um i love the frog analogy well i, I actually don't because i'm a vegetarian so <laughs> but <laughs> the um in terms of the frog analogy we 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 make ourselves the frog and the person with the hand on the burner on the element at the same time mm -hmm. by way of knowing and anybody that's listening to this and has heard <laughs> what I've said up till this point, you have choice. Mm -hmm. You get to decide your life and what you think, feel, and act on. And you now know that that creates your reality. So if you stay where you are mm -hmm. and you keep doing what you're doing, you are the frog and the frog has his hand outside of the pot and his hand is on the element. You can turn it off yeah. or you can turn it up. Um, so that I love that frog analogy when people ask me about it because <laughs> stop, stop okay. turning up your own element, stop boiling yourself. That's yeah. right. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so when it comes to manifesting wealth in your life, could you talk about 
our mindset, belief, um, and paradigms can affect how much wealth you can manifest and attract into your life. The law of attraction is where I have to go with that. <laughs> yeah. My, my, my inner guidance system is saying, law of attraction. We create in our life all things, like I said, by choice. But there's a lot of layers to that onion. The, the amount of money that we make is in relation to what we think that we are capable of doing what we feel that we deserve. If you don't think that anybody is ever going to buy your product, mm -hmm. if you think that your million dollar idea is stupid, and I'm going to be very blunt because people tell me that, and you know why they think their million dollar idea is stupid? Because somebody told them and they believed them. Yeah. And nine times out of ten, that person that told them that their idea was not good was somebody who is also in lack and limitation mindset. Yeah. So we are listening to people who are not living the life we want to be living, mm -hmm. and we're taking their advice. Mm -hmm. So that's where the first change has to be. Mm -hmm. What is your amazing idea? And if anybody tells you it's no good, you don't change your goal. Don't change what's in your heart. Change who you're talking to. Um, mm -hmm. There is a word that Bob Proctor taught me, and, and when I work with my clients, they really get to understand it. The word is pro praxis, and it is lining your beliefs with your behaviors. Anybody right now can say, I believe it's possible for a human to make a million dollars a month income because people do it. We know it. It's a fact. But do you believe that you can make a million dollars a month? That's a whole other story. So um, if you want $10,000 a month income, I'll back it down from a million and make it maybe something a little more chewable. You have got to believe that you can make $10,000 a month income. Because mm -hmm. when I ask somebody, how much a month do you want to make? And they say $10,000, I'll say, okay, well, how much money a week do you believe that you can earn? And they'll say, I don't know, maybe about $500. <laughs> yeah. So those have to line up. But mm -hmm. do not lower what you want out of life to what you feel like you can do up your game of what you think you can do mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. if you want ten thousand dollars a month income you have to start acting like thinking like talking like somebody that does do you feel that somebody who makes ten thousand dollars a month is taking advice from somebody who is complaining about the price of milk? Do you think somebody that's making $10,000 a month is letting somebody tell them their ideas are dumb? No. Mm -hmm. So if you want that income, that lifestyle, because we do want the lifestyle, you were talking about money versus things, mm -hmm. understand that you don't want $10,000 a month. You want the lifestyle. Yeah. You want what it will provide for you. So what will it provide for you? Yeah. And that is a goal. Mm -hmm. That is not a dream or a wish. It's what do you want from your life? Mm -hmm. Some people just want to pay their rent. Really? Are you sure? Do you not want to own a house? Do you not want to go and buy a $5 million house and pay cash for it? And not everybody does. But what would it feel like to... Buy a house that you want to live in and just own it and not worry about mortgage and rent. Mm -hmm. How's that for a goal? Whatever the, it could be a $10,000 house. I don't know. Really? You just want a few dollars extra a month? Well, then the universe is going to give you a few extra dollars a month. Mm -hmm. And it might be the nickel that you found on the floor. 
<laughs> last week. That could have, that could be your money for the month, right? Yeah. So being specific, think big, be careful who you're telling your dreams to. If anybody does not support you, stop telling them about your dreams. Mm -hmm. But believe in yourself because we are all fully capable of earning a million dollars a month. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 And, and one other thing that has to change is we all have to know that there is no lack. The house that Jane wants to live in, the house that Connie wants to drive in, the car that that person over there wants to drive is all here right now. There is no lack. Mm -hmm. If you want to earn $10,000 a month this, this month, you can have it, you can earn it, and it doesn't matter where you live. Mm -hmm. I had a client in South Africa who is building a massive food empire. <laughs> Quite literally, and when I met them, their family was helping them uh, food and clothe their children. It doesn't matter. There is no lack. Mm -hmm. Your house is there. The money is there. You just got to believe you can have it and start doing the things you have to do to get there. Be willing to pay the price. And the mm -hmm. price is not always money. It's very seldom money. It might be at the price of not listening to your, your naysaying friends. It might be at the price of actually getting new friends. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? So mm -hmm. what are you willing to do? What price are you willing to pay? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. Everything has a price. Yeah. There's are you willing to money. face your fears? Yeah. The price of facing your fears walking through that wall because whatever's holding you back has been holding you back your whole life face that fear do it anyway yeah yeah or you will never get past it you got to do it mm -hmm. yeah also money is also an energy it's a it's a manifestation of energy of wealth and affluence so when we learn about working with money we also learn about working with energy and working with our inner potential too. And I really like in the book, Think and Grow Rich, that Napoleon Hill came up with a ranked order of like top 12 list of the riches of life. Material wealth, I think was actually the, the 12th. The first is a positive mental attitude. And the second is sound physical health. The third is harmony in human relationships. And the fourth is freedom from fear. The fifth is the hope of achievement. The sixth is capacity for faith. And the seventh is a willingness to share one's blessings. The, seventh, the eighth is a labor of love. The ninth is an open mind on all subjects. The tenth is self-discipline. The eleventh is the capacity to understand people and the 12th is economic security yeah it's um mm -hmm. it's way down there it's yeah. way down there um i think fear should almost be higher up because i think fear is a really big stopper right mm -hmm. the, the fear of success the fear of failure and the fear of what will everybody else think about me mm -hmm. and say about me are, are pretty high up there money is energy though you you meant you were because we're talking about about uh, abundance mm -hmm. uh, money is energy all things are energy mm -hmm. yeah. everything is born of energy the mm -hmm. tree gets the energy from the ground and the energy from the sun and it grows the leaves mm -hmm. and the leaves fall off and they go back to the ground mm -hmm. and they become energy for next year's trees and it's a cycle of energy, right? Um, water becomes ice, ice becomes, well, ice turns into water, water turns into vapor, vapor turns into ether, goes up, comes back down, turns back into water, and it goes again. It's all energy. Energy is always in circulation. And when Bob Proctor died, when he passed away, he actually transitioned to an alternate form of energy. Yeah. We are all energy, the food we eat, is giving us energy to grow and be strong. And when I use my energy to open a door, I'm transferring energy to that door to push it open. And that energy, when we don't have the energy, we feel tired, we feel lethargic. We don't have energy to do something. That's literally like what people say, but they don't understand what they're saying. And money is no different. 
money is energy. It takes energy to create money. Mm-hmm. You got to put your right energy in the right place. Yeah. If I want a glass of water and so I go and open my front door, I'm not going to get a glass of water. I put my energy at the door, not at the tap. I put it in the wrong place. Yeah. If you want money, you have to put your energy in the right place. Yeah. And where is that right place? The first thing is your thinking. What do you mm-hmm. want and why do you want it? Yeah. And when you put that energy out there mentally, that also is energy. Mm-hmm. The universe brings it to you, the law of attraction, cause and effect. What are you causing? The effect is your result. If you don't like your results, make a new cause. Put your energy somewhere else. Yeah. And when you put your energy into love and helping and, and abundance and sharing your knowledge and your beauty and your God-given gifts with the world, the world responds. Givers gain. What you put out comes back. If you don't like what's coming back, put something else out there. Yeah, right? absolutely. So it is all energy. All of everything is energy. The chair I'm sitting on is energy. Mm-hmm. It's um, all energy. So could you talk about uh, what aspects need to come together to create financial wisdom? In other words, is there actually a wealth formula? A wealth formula. Um, I think I think what where where we started our conversation today is really the beginnings of it. What do you feel like you deserve? Mm-hmm. What do you think you're capable of? Mm-hmm. What would you love? What do you get up every day and what are you moving towards? Make mm-hmm. it big and beautiful. Get a goal, get the dream, get the idea, and when you start impressing upon your subconscious mind the life that you want to live your future memory if you can close your eyes and you can go there and you can think about it you will start moving towards it you will start looking for the circumstances to make it happen the first thing is you must decide what do you want and why do you want it money comes to you when you're ready to receive it Mm -hmm. it's not coming to you What do you still have to get ready for? Are you ready for it? Mm -hmm. Are you, when it shows up, are you going to recognize it? Mm -hmm. But you have to know what it is. If you don't know how much it is, then you will never see it when it arrives. You can't look for the circumstances to make it happen. So what do you want and why do you want it? And believe that you can do it. Because if Elon Musk can do it, if Bob Proctor can do it, if I can do it, If Bill Gates can do it, so can you. Mm -hmm. So can everybody. And at the foundation of the wealth is belief. Yeah. What you're capable of. And then go do the work you have to do. Go put your energy where it needs to be. Mm -hmm. Stay grounded. Stay positive. And we're not always going to stay there all the time. I have ups and downs too. Mm -hmm. One of the other universal laws that I teach is the law of ebb and flow. Mm There's ups and downs, and in your down times, recognize them and Mm -hmm. use them to generate how you're going to be massively more amazing when the next flow comes, because it will come. Mm -hmm. We have ups and downs. Are you focusing on the downs? Are you focusing on the ups? Mm -hmm. So when we're in the ups, when, when life is flowing and everything is good, then when the down comes, and I do this, when the down does come, I'm like, oh. There you are. Okay, I'm going to have a day of binge watching a TV show or at least a couple of hours and just allow myself a three hour lunch break Mm -hmm. to just enjoy because I've recognized I'm in a down energy mode and I just take it as a rest, Mm -hmm. a rest on the on the on the beautiful journey of life. We sit on a park bench for a while and we rest, but then we get up and we get going again. Um, So recognizing those. So when life kind of knocks you down, maybe some team members quit, maybe a customer returns product, any of those things, it's a reset. It's not a denial. It's a reset. It's like, okay, why did that happen? How can I stop this stuff from happening? How can I move forward better? Then go do that and just keep moving forward. Um, 
but what do you want and why do you want it are the two questions you've got to keep asking yourself and make it big and beautiful because mm -hmm. that goal that dream that amount of money and whether it's taking the kids on an amazing vacation or to walk up to a real estate agent at an open house and say boom here's 1.2 million dollars cash i'm buying this house right now everybody out <laughs> whatever your dream is whatever you want that money for just believe that you can do it mm -hmm. and keep moving forward and never stop until you get there mm -hmm. i love that yeah I, I really love that um you touched the many um amazing points uh, the first is we all have the same potential that other people have. And it is no longer a theory. It is actually proven by researchers. Psychotherapists are aware of this now. Whether good or bad, we all have the potential um, of everybody else has because we are part of the humanity. So whatever is in humanity, we have access to it as well. And you know, thousands of years ago, Rumi actually said that we are not just a drop in an ocean, we are ocean in a drop. So whatever is in the human potential, good or bad, it's all within us. It just depends on us to choose what to activate. And I really love that you also focus on talking about beliefs, the important factors um, to attract to wealth is actually attract anything else too. It's about your belief and if you see yourself worthy. And even when it comes to healing, and I remember I asked um, uh, a healer, like why some people don't go into healing, you know, they're, they're rich, right? And I didn't understand. And her uh, response to me was actually surprising at the time, but that made sense to me. And she said, it's because they don't think they're worthy of it. That's the reason that so feeling worthy is so important, but it also requires a lot of in inner healing and also like in the reflections, intro perspective, understanding of why we feel the way we feel, why we think the we, way, way we think. That's really, uh, it's really the the basis of everything I've ever learned is is the way we think and the way we feel about things. Um, something really important for um, everybody to really know is something is always moving into your life. Mm -hmm. And everything that's moving into your life right now in this moment is based on the law of cause and effect of action reaction whatever is moving into your life you're causing mm -hmm. I do know that my results in my life from my business I do know about my relationships I do know about what I think I'm capable of all come from my beliefs and I cause all of that stuff to come into my life but also it's not my fault or at least it wasn't my fault and the 90 percent i spoke of earlier it's not your fault everybody it's not your fault they were your choices and you caused it on some level but it's not your fault because you didn't know better because it is our paradigms and a paradigm is because we've mentioned that word a few times today paradigms are a collection of habits and beliefs that are stored in your subconscious mind there's good paradigms and there's bad paradigms. The bad paradigms are the things that are causing us to think limit, limited about ourselves, that are causing us to be not nice to ourselves. Our paradigms will cause us to look in the mirror and see an overweight person or a, or a sexy beast. Our paradigms do that. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. it doesn't actually matter what size of clothing you buy when you go to the grocery store you can think the same way about all of it and that's the same with money that's the same with everything mm -hmm. and so what are you causing to come into your life and what are you causing to be created and if you don't like it cause something else to happen and mm -hmm. that is the paradigm shift journey i did with bob proctor that's what i teach my clients and again it is something a person needs help with mm -hmm. yeah 
I had Bob Proctor. I had the Proctor Gallagher Institute. Mm -hmm. I had my amazing husband. I actually now have like-minded people who are on the same journey as me or even further ahead of me on my journey to helping the world understand that you can do, be, and have it all. But I've caused myself to have those friends. Yeah. I've caused my friends who didn't believe in me to no longer be in my life. Mm -hmm. I caused that. And I've caused myself, I caused myself to be broken homeless. I've caused myself to have a very abundant, beautiful life. And you mentioned before, Jane, that abundance isn't always money and it's not. Abundance can be love, mm -hmm. happiness. Money doesn't give you happiness. Happiness comes from the inside. Mm -hmm. Happiness is an inside job. Love is an mm -hmm. inside job. If you want to be loved, be lovable. Yes. If you want to share happiness, be a happy person. Mm -hmm. And it's with the belief and changing those negative paradigms, taking away the negative self-talk. And when you look in the mirror, say, I love me, instead of, oh, look at that zit. I have one myself, <laughs> right? I don't beat myself up over. I'm like, oh, look at my amazing hair today, right? Yeah. My choice, pick and choose. Yeah. Choice, belief. It wasn't your, it's not your fault where you are today because you didn't know better, even mm -hmm. though it was your choices that got you here. But now, you know, you have a choice. Yeah. Now, if you don't change it, sorry, it's the person in the mirror now moving forward because you do have choices. Mm -hmm. Are you going to start making the choices that you need to make to have the life you want to live? Or are you going to continue to listen to the news and talk to your friends about how crappy life is? And are you going to argue with people? Or are you going to just let them win the argument because it's better to have harmony than to be right? <laughs> and they're all choices mm -hmm. that we get to make. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, I really love what you do because I think it's this helping people on a multi-dimensional level. And I've also met people who are in your field or in the spiritual healing field. They feel guilty for charge people. Could you speak about that? I'm going to quote Og Mandito. Mm -hmm. If you want to do somebody a favor, take their money. I've done free trainings. I've done free workshops. I've even given away my one-on-one -on -one $10,000 program to people. They don't do the work. Money is accountability. The law of compensation says to give more than you get paid for. So you must get paid. You must allow them to pay you because money has to be kept in circulation. You have to allow money to go around. Mm -hmm. And what goes around comes around. And so if you say you give somebody a hug, you get a hug back. Mm -hmm. If you give somebody something, you will get the same thing back, and usually tenfold. But money needs to be kept circulating. You have to allow them to pay you for your work mm -hmm. so that they are accountable to you yeah. because they are now invested mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and money is it's just energy you are giving them something they are giving you something you are giving them your energy mm -hmm. in the form of helping them they are giving you their energy in form of money because they gave their energy to their company to earn that money so it's actually an exchange of energy. Yeah. It's an exchange of energy. Mm -hmm. So if we look at it on that way, then we have to honor them by being paid. I hear so many coaches out there that are starting out that are doing free coaching. But I have given free programs to many, 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 many people. And had they actually decided three years ago, to take even my $200 course, they'd be way further ahead than they are now, keeping on coming to my free stuff, because it's free. Oh, I don't have to do the work. She'll probably do another free webinar in a couple of months. Mm -hmm. Oh, I don't really have to take notes. It was free anyway, so I'm not losing anything. I'm not missing out on anything. But the people that even join my $50 a month group 
are having great results. Mm -hmm. We must charge. We are not doing anybody any favors by not. We're actually stopping the flow yeah. of energy mm -hmm. yeah. by not doing it. And because, for example, if it was you and me, Jane, we'll just role play for a minute. If you were giving me your services for free, I would actually feel bad. Yeah. That you're giving away your business to me for free. Yeah. Now, I'm not putting out good energy because every time you and I get on a coaching call, every mm -hmm. time I open my workbook or every time I watch a video or whatever process is going on out there, I feel bad because I know I didn't pay for this and this is your livelihood. Mm -hmm. And now I'm not being as productive as I should have. Because yeah. I feel like now I owe you. Mm -hmm. and I feel bad that I can't pay you or I feel bad that you won't take my money. Well, yeah, you feel bad so because you're a good person. We, we have to, for so many reasons, we've got to keep it flowing. Yeah. Um, I took a, a tarot card reading course and the lady wouldn't take any money. But she said, but I'll tell you what, you can bring me this, 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 and this. So um, one was a gift card to a grocery store. One was a bottle of red wine. Like, and so she had these things. If you don't have money, but you still have to pay me, I need something from you. We've got to keep the energy flowing. So if a coach doesn't want to take the person's money, there has to be an energy exchange. Yeah. In yeah. some form. Yeah. So please charge. Charge what you need to. Charge what you can. Even charge less like have a sliding scale, but you are doing nobody favors by doing free webinars. And when I do a free webinar, I know that I am just giving out the energy and the love that I got in the past, like I'm paying it forward, but in no way do the people coming to my free webinar get anywhere near the results to if they pay for it. Mm -hmm. So I am doing a disservice almost by that. Yeah, yeah, right. Allowing giving and receiving, it's also uh, balancing the scales too, like balance between, you know, feminine and masculine energy, giving and receiving. That's also very, very important. And I, and I would say maybe people who feel bad about um, charging people, they need to look at what's their limiting belief around that. Yeah, yeah. Um, we can't. Mm -hmm. We can't feel bad. Um but, but also uh, something else that I study and we never really talked about it is the science of getting rich. We need to always give more than we get. Mm -hmm. the, the, the science of getting rich by Wallace D. Waddles, an amazing course. Uh, and Bob Proctor does have a self-training course on that if anybody's ever interested. But the, we, in giving more than you get, it's not meaning in cash value, it's called use value. There's two different prices. There's use value and cash value. Cash value is what you actually pay for it. So for example, you buy the book, Think and Grow Rich, and maybe you pay, I don't know, 20 bucks for it. But the use value of it, when you use the book properly, you read it, you put it down, you go and do the work. The use value of it could be millions. That's use value. So Whatever you're charging your client, give them more than they give you. Always give more. And because givers gain, the more you give, the more you get. Mm -hmm. and, and then that works the other way around too for them. If they're giving to you and they're getting, so then when you're coaching them and you're helping them to increase their life in whatever modality and whatever niche you're in, then teach them to give more than they get. Mm -hmm. So when my clients say hire me for one-on-one -on -one to help them do a massive paradigm shift, they get more than just a program. I give more than I get that way. More value. Give more of me and of my energy into mm -hmm. making sure they're successful. So just give more than you get. Then you don't feel bad about it. But it does come from confidence. Brand new coaches that are out there, they got to, and like you mentioned, Jane, they got to check their confidence level. 
Yeah. Why do you feel like you don't deserve to get paid? Mm -hmm. Why do you think what you're giving is not worth any money? Maybe mm -hmm. you're not giving enough. Maybe you feel you're not going to give them that value, but maybe you are also lacking a little bit of confidence because imposter syndrome and all of these, these words out there that people use to excuse themselves from being massively amazing, it's confidence. It's a lack of confidence and they need to go through a paradigm shift themselves mm -hmm. and shift that belief on a subconscious level. And it's a subconscious level shift that has to happen or else we slip back to the old habits. Yeah. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. But give more than you get. Give yeah. more than you get in use value, not in cash value. Mm -hmm. Because we are all in business. We're not going to kid ourselves. We're all here to put a roof over our heads and to have a beautiful life. Mm -hmm. So give more in use value. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Keep the balance. Keep it going. Yeah, I love that. Um, as our interview like, come to a close, you know, even though I can talk to you about this forever, because I just love talking to you. And I really like your generosity and honesty. Um, just for audience um, who are struggling with uh, their finances, do you have any uh, final advice or comments about for them? Bob Proctor wants you to know to stop struggling. Stop mm -hmm. saying it. Stop thinking about it. Mm -hmm. If you think you're struggling, you're going to find more things to struggle about. What do you want? Why do you want it? That's all you got to know. Focus on it every day. Every morning when you wake up and we all hear about affirmations. Do an affirmation and do gratitudes every single day morning seven days a week 365 days a year no excuses the price you're willing to pay for success is a half an hour with a pen and paper every morning are you willing to do what it takes to get there then do this every morning write out bob proctor would say 50 times morning and night maybe 100 times morning and night you do you but an affirmation is a sentence, a statement, a strong statement every day. And so here's Bob Proctor's that he taught me that I use. I am so happy and grateful now that money comes to me in increasing quantities from multiple sources on a continuous basis. Mm -hmm. yeah. Write that out with a pen and paper, not on your computer. Don't just think about it. Don't just hum it to yourself. Pen and paper, sit down and write it mm -hmm. 25, 50 times, 100 times a day. Write down your goal. I'm so happy and grateful now that I am living in my beautiful beach house that I paid cash for with my 12 dogs, 20 cats, and 55 sports cars in the garage, whatever it is. Yeah. Write that out every day as if you already have it every single mm -hmm. morning. Mm -hmm. Write out that goal. And then gratitudes. I'm so happy and grateful mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. my husband, for a hot cup of coffee. I am so blessed and grateful for this warm bed I'm laying in. I am so happy and grateful for the pen in my hand, the person that dreamt up the feeling of how to make this pen because it feels so good in my hand, the store clerk who sold me the pen. The person who invented the sliding glass door that I left the store from because I didn't have to touch an icky door handle to get out of the store. Mm -hmm. yeah. We all have things to be grateful for. Even listening to my voice right now, there are millions of people. I don't know the numbers, but millions, maybe even billions of people that will never hear this message because they don't have electricity. They don't have devices like this. Yeah. They don't even know the internet exists. Mm -hmm. So be grateful. Find things to be grateful for and mm -hmm. write 10 things at least every day. Mm -hmm. So the affirmation, your goal, gratitude every single morning will change your life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I want to make a bet that everybody that listens to this does it for 30 days in a row. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I usually come on to these podcasts and say, most of you guys are not even going to do it for a week. 
Mm -hmm. but I'm not going to sabotage you. I am going to tell you that I wish upon you that you do it for at least 30 days in a row. Mm -hmm. Mark it on your calendar. Make somebody hold you accountable. If you fall asleep at bed at night and you didn't do it, get your butt out of bed and go do it. Mm -hmm. yeah. That will change everybody's life more than anything else. Mm -hmm. yeah. That is the gift that I leave you today. Thank you so much, Connie. Yeah, I love gratitude. Actually, um, the sequence book of the, the secrets called the magic, it's actually all about gratitude. And the, the free information you give us today, it's so valuable, you know, you can really open people's eyes. And, and thanks for again, reminding us about uh, the difference between cash value and use value. Yeah, so, thank so you. I pray people get use value from this and because it was free, mm -hmm. please don't take it as free because you gave up an hour of your life to watch it. Mm -hmm. So energy exchange. Yeah, yeah. We gave an hour to make this happen and they're mm -hmm. giving an hour to listen to it. But go do the work. Yeah, yes. Go yes. do the work. You can't have a better effect if you don't cause something to happen. So go do the work. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much, Connie. And I You're look welcome. forward to our future interviews and podcasts. I can't wait. I'm looking forward to it. Thank you so Thank much you. for having me Thank here. Thank you, Connie. You're yeah, welcome. Have a great night. Yeah. Bye. Bye-bye.